Hi, uh, Graham Waller, aka G, aka G Man, um, and a freelance audio engineer. Uh, we're here in Emmeline Studios in Whitstable today to uh, talk about the Audient Miko and particularly the very face control on, uh, on the beast there. Uh, we're going to be recording guitar with a session player today um, with a two mic setup, uh, a 57 and a ribbon. And we're going to be doing clean tones, crunch tones, and distortion tones and using the very face control to line up the two microphones to the best possible fade. All right, we're in the live room. We're going to be tracking some guitars. Got a nice Framus cab here with a uh, SM57, it's a dynamic microphone. We've got the uh, SER1, which is a ribbon microphone. And we're going to be moving these two mics around in different positions to reflect the different styles of guitar that we're going to be recording. We're going to start with clean first, we're going to move to crunch, and then we're going to do distortion. So this is the clean setup as I have it right now. We've got a uh, 57 off axis on a 45 degree angle, and we've got the R1 in the room. Now the problem we used to normally have with these is that uh, you've got a nice direct mic, you've got a room mic, but the room mic could be out of phase, okay, because of the distance from the cab. Uh, normally you'd have to go back and forth between the control room and the live room, experimenting with different setups, micing it up, using headphones to try and line it up and get it sounding uh, in phase. And it's a bit long-winded and a bit back and forth. With the Miko and the very phase control, you can sit in the control room with the guitarist and dial in the tone at the same time. So it makes the whole thing a lot quicker. So we're gonna demonstrate that to you now. Okay, so you just heard Richard there playing a clean guitar with the room mic and off axis 57 situation that we had in there for cleans. Uh, it was out of phase, as you just heard, so we're going to use the very phase control to line that up. And make it sound like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to line up the two microphones that we have in the live room now. We've found a nice position for them, but they're a bit out of phase, as you just heard. So what we've got is the 57 running into channel 1 and the room mic running into channel 2 with the very phase control. I have pink noise tone coming out of Pro Tools, which we've run into the AxeFX rig here, and that's going to be coming out of the amp as you're hearing. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to reverse the phase of the room microphone. You can hear a different tone there. And what that is doing is flipping the whole thing over 180 degrees. So what, as you can hear by the tone, that's quite a fat sound, which meant that the mic was out of phase anyway. So, we just it. so what we're going to do is we're going to put in the very phase control and sweep that around to find the thinnest part of that pink noise tone. So I'm just going to sweep that in now. I think it's about there. So when we reverse the phase again, we have a nice fat pink noise tone. So we just heard Richard play there. As you can hear, it's a nice, thick, warm tone now. Okay, we're back in the live room. We're gonna be doing crunch and distortion tones. Slightly different mic setup this time, the same, same microphones. I've still got the 57 dynamic in a 45 degree off axis, and I've got the ribbon a bit closer, but on a different cone, center cone. Now, these would still have slight phase issue, um, and we're gonna use the very phase to, to line that up. The way that used to work for me, was I'd have to plug in a set of headphones and be monitoring the monitor outputs. I'd run some pink noise through the head um, and flip one side out of phase, one of the microphones, and then sweep the microphones around the cone and just find the point where it most cancels out for me. Then I'd hold that in position, lock it all off, and go and flip the phase back, and then that would be in phase for me. Now, obviously, again, you can probably imagine that's quite long-winded. So we're gonna use the very phase today to line that up whilst the guitarist is playing and uh, get it all sounding fat. Okay, now we're gonna move on to crunch tones. We've moved the mic set up to reflect that as you saw in the previous uh, clip. So let's get the uh, phaser line.
Okay, just heard Richard play again after we've dialed in the very phase on the crunch tone. Much better. Okay, so you just heard Richard's heavy tone uh, and that's a bit thin, so we're gonna sort that out now. Okay, so you just heard Richard there again with his heavy tone, much fatter and ready to go. So as you can see, the Miko's very phase tool is uh, great and perfectly equipped for uh, dealing with this exact problem and getting guitars sounding the way they should on record.